Have you ever wondered where your bike is actually made? Not just assembled, but actually created? Let me give you a clue. It's most likely not where you think. Taiwan is the bicycle workshop of the world, and the global manufacturing hub churns out a staggering number of frames and components for many of the biggest bike brands in the world. Brands like Trek, Colnago and Scott, among many others, have frames and components made in Taiwan. The National Bicycle Dealers Association estimate that in 2014, a whopping 99% or 17.8 million bicycles were imported into the US from Taiwan and China. That's a hell of a lot of bicycles. Quick side note, made in Taiwan does not automatically mean poor quality. Taiwan leads the way in premium frame manufacturing and is at the cutting edge of many of the technologies in this field. The best known Taiwanese producer of bikes is Giant, who also happens to be the largest bicycle manufacturer on the planet. A household name today which we've got a typhoon to thank for starting. Way back in 1971, founder King Liu, awesome name by the way, had seen his eel farming business destroyed by a powerful typhoon. What now? The choice was obvious. Let's start making bikes. And after clubbing together $100,000 with some partners, Giant was born in the port city of Taichung, Taiwan. CEO until last year, Tony Lowe, joined up with King to drive the business forward. And by 1977, they had secured their big breakthrough as they agreed a deal to start making bikes for US brand Schwinn, pretty much the most well-known bike brand in the world at the time. They would produce the world sport line of bikes for Schwinn. And the US company was impressed by the quality on offer from the Taiwanese newcomers. By the early 1980s, Giant was manufacturing around 100,000 bikes a year for Schwinn. And thanks to trade union disputes and strikes at Schwinn, by the middle of the decade, Giant was the company's most important supplier, making more than two thirds of the brand's bikes, accounting for a whopping 75% of sales. With a growing demand for well-made bikes, Tony and King saw an opportunity to branch out and start producing bikes under the Giant name. They officially launched the Giant brand of bikes in Europe in 1986 and a year later in the US. The newfound competition didn't go down too well with Schwinn, who cut ties with Giant, found a new supplier in China, and then went bankrupt in 1992. Meanwhile, Giant introduced the first mass-produced carbon fiber bike, the Kdex 980C. That was in 1987, and sales started rocketing. It wasn't all plain sailing for Giant, though. The US was proving a tough nut to crack for the Taiwanese company. Years of losses in the US were thankfully covered off by profit-making markets like China and Europe. Patience and innovation was going to be critical in equal measure, and it didn't take long for Giant to be recognized as world leaders in the latter. With the help of now legendary bike designer Mike Burrows, in the mid-90s, Giant was the first brand to bring to market the modern-looking road bikes we're familiar with today. The Total Combat Road, or TCR, had its origins in mountain biking, and its radically sloping top tube and compact frame has become the blueprint for road bikes ever since, with many citing the model as the most important road bike ever made. Global exposure followed as Giant began supplying bikes to pro cycling team Onse, where the likes of Laurent Jalabert and Alex Zula were riding the TCR to glory in the mountains at the Tour de France. By 2011, Giant was producing 5.7 million bikes a year in total, making more bikes for itself than for other brands. Three years later, they were shipping 6.6 .6 million units, around 30% of which is for other brands, with global sales of $1.4 billion. And today, the brand is the world leader in e-bikes, had its first Grand Tour win thanks to Tom Dumoulin at the 2017 Giro d'Italia, has moved into the rapidly growing bike rental market with its U-Bike bike sharing system, and also has one of the leading women-specific line of bikes, Live, with 2016 revenues of more than $100 million for that line alone. Who likes eels anyway? God bless you, King and Tony.